Gambit versus Millennium, uh, almost a must win for both these teams for very different reasons though. Gambit trying to chase their way back up towards that first position. And for Millennium, they just desperately need points on the board at this stage. Yeah, if Millennium accrue just like, one or two more losses, they are going to be sitting on the verge of Brilliant. mathematical Brilliant. guaranteed relegation. We're running the numbers now from this week and next week to see exactly what their chances are of making it into the playoffs. But a win here would make it a lot simpler. Jerry is about to get sight of the members of Gambit when they walk across. So we need to see if Edward can land some good CC either with a flay or a death sentence. The moment they walk out, We'll see where Jerry's going to go. He's got to head down the river. There's no way for him to get away. He's going to be able to stay out of range and see if Edward can connect with the death sentence. Is he going to go flashing in? The fact that the rest of the team have kind of gone the other way tells me maybe not here as we see Critton doing some damage from the side. And actually Darian and Edward just going to walk off in towards that tri-bush. We'll see if Darian actually recalls here whether he's going to walk to the top side. It does look like we will be seeing the duos facing off down bottom. Yeah, it's something that I almost expect from Gambit. Even though the Ezreal Leona lane can get scary once they hit level 6, getting up to level 6, Lucian and Thresh should be able to punish them. Genja's going to get stunned up and take a lot of poke, but this is... I think he needs to recall and heal. It's a little risky because it's very early on. The one thing I do want to highlight just about the early items, Jairi has gone for that Relic Shield start. And Alex has actually gone for Boots as his first item in that mid lane. We talked about how Gragas' barrels can outrange Rise and zone him. Those Boots are definitely going to help Alex to just avoid that damage and also get in range of Gragas to get that harass down with his QWQ combo. Good to see Alex Hitch coming back towards Rise in this mid lane. In terms of the jungle starts though, we can go after a little bit of action at level 1 to our standard starts. With Aranea being helped out there on his red buff on the top side of the jungle, Diamond going to be starting off his blue buff here. Won't have many problems with that one. And looking to replicate the kind of form and disruption that we saw out of Insects uh, Kha'Zix during IEM. Yeah, so we'll see how, how Diamond makes that work. One of the great things about the 4.3 Kha'Zix and the damage reduction on his ultimate is that he can jump into a team forces your opponents to put down a pink ward or to use one of those scrying lenses, for example, get vision on him. And even though he's, you know, revealed, he's got 50% damage reduction if Diamond evolves at level 6. We'll have to see what his build path is. Jerry, once again, going for some early poke, but let's be honest, that's not the greatest at this stage. No, not exactly doing tons of damage to each other as Diamond there on his red buff, Aranea is doing his blue, so we'll see if the junglers now, after they have these double buffs, are going to be getting involved in these lanes. There's the first up coming out from Edward, just skipping wide of the point there. Jiri, we talked about it, didn't have his best of days yesterday, was missing hooks left, right and centre. He's going to have to be landing his Leona ultimates in particular if they want to get things underway. Today. Yeah, and, and there's no room for error because of the team that Gambit has. Well, as we're talking about that, Diamond, he's going to go on Kurt. Oh, Flash jumps in there as well. They've managed to get the slowdown. Kurt has already flashed here. Here comes Aranea from the side, but Aranea might go down. There is the kill on to Kurt. Aranea gets slowed. Alex Titch is going to nuke him. Double kill. Disaster for Millennium. That is terrible for Millennium. Alex Titch not only gets first blood and a secondary kill, but the double buffs to Boot. This is on a champion that wants to get items and wants to scale as quickly as possible. You never want to give any more gold than you absolutely have to to a rise. And I think this should be an instant tier plus a ruby crystal potentially. Going to have to start working towards that uh, Rod of Ages. That is a massive power spike for Alex. A 3 minute 50 tier plus blue. This is going to stack incredibly quickly. It's not the only tier either. either. Millennium surely crying about this one. Not a good start whatsoever. Aranea comes around to try and protect Kurt from the damage. Damage, ends up losing his life as well, and both kills, as we say, go over to Alex. It's wow. Jerry diving in. Expert play from Edward. Very, very well played by Edward, cancelling out that flay onto Genja. I actually think that even if it had followed through, I feel like Creator was a little too far behind, but good reactions there from Edward to protect his AD carry. We'll see how that lane continues to play out. One of the other reasons that that gank sort of didn't really work out in, in um, Aranea's favor is he jumps into like a, this like no man's land where you're going to be able to just get isolated away from Diamond Prox and zoned out, you know. Uh, Kerp was in full retreat. I think Aranea maybe should have played that a bit more safely. We heard him saying in the pregame, whenever he sees Gambit, he gets sad and gets scared. That's exactly why. Indeed, not the start that they were looking for from that one. Darian, as we expect here with this Renekton, 
Doing a lot of bullying onto Kevin in this top lane. Does have a CS and an experience advantage at this point. We'll see if, you know, what usually happens to Darren if he gets ahead in the early game. He tends to kind of lose his head a little bit, go between the turrets. We'll see how uh, controlled he keeps this one, because yesterday he did not have a good game for Gambit. Oh, Alex is chasing Kurt, but here comes Aranea. Aranea from the side. Double buffs on Alex Hitch there, and actually Alex just turns things around. Diamond Walls coming up from the bottom side of the river as well. Not really a threat there, and even if it were Millennium, don't have any flashes to chase in with afterwards after well you're going to get room prison aren't you then you're not going to be able to chase especially without the flash well here's darren as you talked about he's got a little bit yeah. of a lead he's got a matchup that he's comfortable in so he's farming between the turrets in this top lane uh, i just want to quickly go back to that early tier that alex was able to pick up about one or two patches ago tier did have a slight uh, change and buff to it where it will passively give you mana without needing to cast spells so it actually fills ever so slightly quicker uh, the only reason I highlight that, we haven't actually seen tiers built into anything because the champions have sort of fallen out of favor a little bit in the 2014 season. There is Darian, another full wave in between the inner and outer turrets on the top lane. Leaves Kevin all alone to farm on that top side. Kevin does have himself the teleport, so we can see if he gets into the action. And Darcy and Aranea coming down towards the bottom. Edward going low, has to flash away. Genja trying to escape as well. The Q block, can they get the damage down? Oh, the hook! The hook onto Aranea! He's going down! Edward picks up the kill! Can you believe it? It's not over because here comes Diamond and Alex. They want Creatin and Jerry. And there's no flashes off. There is for Jerry, but not for Creatin. Can he jump out of this one? They lock down Jerry. Have they got the damage to finish off? No, not quite. Not just yet. So they managed to get away with their lives, but the Thresh Prince arrives once more. Underneath the turret, Edward saves his flash till the last second, throws out the death sentence, connecting with Aranea, getting two additional turret shots, and that allowed him to pick up the kill with his Ignite. That was turning around a gank, which truthfully should have been a kill for Millennium. That was great counterplay by the bottom lane of Gambit. And Genja blocking out that Q, which would have meant the death, most definitely, of Edward. Funnily enough, the man that turns that one around, at least Gambit, 3-0 up, a huge chunk of gold already. It's almost uh, 10,000, that really would be a huge chunk. <laughs> 2,000 gold, seven minutes and 20 seconds only into this game. We see that both mid laners have now hit level oh, six. Oh, Darian's in Aaron Air, yeah. Coming up towards Darian, this is the way that you catch Darian out. You make him feel comfortable, then you chase him down. There's the pillar coming in. They're gonna follow him through. Kerp actually comes around with the explosive cast to get the kill. That's actually very important. The fact that three members get that assist gold, they are gonna just think uh, gain some additional power. Remember that Kevin on Trandall is already behind Renekton just because of the matchup. So good play, RNA is about to hit level six. He unfortunately has not had the greatest of starts to this game. But if he can find good knockbacks and allow the rest of his team to pick up kills, that Trundle and Gragas, they have the tools available to scale up and deal well with this Renekton and Rise. Interesting to see now how Kurt does in this mid lane. He's brought himself that CS lead up and approaching 10 CS in his favor. His blue buff will be coming into play here in a second as well. Aranea just getting that one all kicked off. And Will Aranea then venture down on towards this bottom lane once again? We'll see about that because Creatin is behind CS to Genja and obviously that kill from a little bit earlier on onto Aranea kind of set this mid lane even further back for Millennium. Yeah, what we actually seen there is as the blue buff was being secured there for Kerb with the help of Aranea, Alex actually threw down his ultimate to get that movement speed and try get in range to uh, attempt to steal that blue buff away. That's a very aggressive play from Alex on that rise. Now, his cooldown, you know, it does get reduced whenever he casts his spells thanks to his passive, so it's not a massive investment, but it's a nice signal that Alex is roaming, is invading, and he wants to play aggressively. Well, Darian died in the top lane, but now he's come back in and managed to take the first tower of the game down almost for free there. Kevin had recalled, got himself the uh, Vamp Scepter in there with a the Chain Vest as well. And there is Alex charging on through, has popped his ultimate, they get in towards Kerp, but Kerp flashes out. Yeah, instant reply. The Kerp did not want to run the risk of getting slowed by Kha'Zix and then rooted by Ryze. We see that uh, Diamond Prox on that Kha'Zix has actually evolved his Void Assault, that ultimate, so he does have that additional charge, does have that damage reduction. Now the rest of Gambit have grouped around Dragon Millennium, looking to challenge, 
and Solar Flare is available from Jerry. So I think that's a smart call by Gambit to back away. In those tight corridors, the power of Leona and Gragas is actually going to be a little bit better than their team fight combo can offer at this point. So wise call to back away and not run the risk of multi man ult. Oh, there's Alex actually going in after Kerb, gets altered back. This is good damage from Kerb. Alex forced to flash away. Very well played by Kerb. The burst that's coming out of Gragas, even without much ability power, he's just sitting on two Doran's rings and his runes and masteries was enough to force Alex away. Now, if Alex sticks in the lane, Arena's going to be looking to set something up, but you can see Alex has actually backed away. He's going to recall. Kerb, not too phased by those two early kills. He's, like we said, he's got the range, he's got the damage on Gragas to deal with that rise right now. Kevin going in on towards Darien once again, as I mentioned. Vamp set up, was picked up. Darien has himself a giant spell and a chain vest as well. But look at this. The rest of Millennium are starting to close in. Kevin going to go awfully low from this one. But there is the ultimate thrown down by Kevin. Kirk just waiting off to the side here. And Darien, I'm afraid, is going to be going down once again. Or is he? He somehow managed to escape down the back. Ignite is ticking, but he is still alive. Kevin's got no mana to really chase this. It's going to have to be Aaron Air landing the queue. Oh, he missed it. He flashes in, misses the Q. He's going to be getting another one up here in a second. He's still got full HP, so he can go under the tower. And Darian dodges behind. How in hell did he just survive that? Either way, he's opened up Gambit's first dragon. The Swag Lord himself just trots out with his red pants on. He gets away. Now, that play was going to allow Gambit to get positioning on Dragon to begin with. But he gets away with his life. Now, it's not over. It's Jerry and Kreaton already trumble. The hook doesn't connect. Hulk misses. There is a good solar flare. Kreaton jumps in towards Diamond. They call it coming out. Kreaton now left on his own. Jerry going low as well. Diamond actually taking a lot of hits. There is the ulti out of Kreaton. But they lock down. Jerry, low HP on two men, but a kill is a kill. Four members of Gambit grabbed themselves assists. They got the dragon a few seconds ago, and Gambit looked like a revitalized team. The mistakes of the roaming yesterday against Alliance have not repeated themselves here today against Millennium. Alex is thinking about going in on Kerp, and I think the, the, the epitome of what Gambit are doing right now is, is constant roaming. Alex has not been in that mid lane for a significantly long amount of time. He's tried to invade blue. He's gone bottom lane twice already at the 12 minute mark. This is quite unheard of. And in that top lane, Darian just got back there and constantly annoying the hell out of Kevin. But here comes a push on towards Alex. He gets knocked away. Oh. Aranea misses another point bank Q. We did see the ultimate pop from Alex. But well, the rest of the team here are closing in. Alex turns around, goes on towards Kirk. Does get kicked away here by Aranea. Surely can't miss another Q at this range. Surely will finish him off. And he does have to dash out to the ward. Safety first. Millennium pick up a kill back onto Alex. So Alex once again just getting bounced around by Kerb. This is actually a good sign for Millennium because Kerb's barrels have been on point. He's knocked Alex around. He's almost been able to solo Alex on two separate occasions right now. Uh, enlisted the help of RNA to secure the most recent kill. The problem for Millennium is they're giving up too much CS and too many objectives. They've lost a tower, they've lost a dragon, which means they're 3,000 gold behind. If they can stop that, if they can prevent losing uh, any more gold and items to, the, to Gambit, and they can stall the game, they can actually pull themselves back in. But it's, it's a very risky business they have right now. And meanwhile, pushing out this bottom lane, Creator has found himself regaining the CS lead here. And if we look at Genja's build, I, I don't want to call it too early, but it does look like he's going to go Bloodthirst at first, which is very strange for Genja. So we'll see if this actually gets over. I'm not believing yet. And the reason I say so, he's gone built for a cutlass yeah. into IE. Right now, Darian and Diamond, they're turning it on Kevin and Aranet. Yeah, no need to be scared here. They've got the damage coming out of Kazakhstan. And here comes Alex. It's Kevin going to get blasted, but can they finish him off? Chasing him down here. Kevin's got no more escape ability. Darian thought about going there, I think, on towards the steps of the base. But they get the one kill nonetheless on towards Aranet, who Again, he's struggling. Three deaths for him already. I'm actually disappointed with Darren. He had Flash and Ignite available. I think he could have got that kill if he went for it. But once again, Gambit just controlling this map. You see, Diamond has been roaming and in the lanes an immense amount. And with Darren moving from the top lane into the red buff, they were able to, to just uh, uh, stumble on top of Kevin and RNA in the jungle, turn that around. With the Dominus at this level and no real defensive stats for Kevin, he's got a chain vest and ninja tab eye. It's not enough to deal with all of that damage that's coming out of Renekton and Kha'Zix. Well, this bot lane pushed back a little and Genja regaining the CS lead that Creaton wrestled back from him earlier on. Meanwhile, Alex H is going to get a 
third blue buff of the game, because let's not forget, he did get the double buffs of Aaron out right at the start. Made that lane a little harder for Kurt, but he's since caught up nicely in that one. He's 112 to the 94 CS off Alex Hitch. And there is the Athene's Unholy Grail done. Jerry actually moving down because the rest of the team are going to start to close in onto this one. Edward puts down the box. That's going to slow them. But here comes Kevin from the backside. Puts down the pillar. Edward's definitely sacrificing himself here. I'm not sure that Genja gets away. A good barrel comes across. Kevin picks up the kill. Very good play by Millennium. Now, if they stay on this bottom tower, they can actually drop this one. We see Kurt immediately roaming back to that mid lane. He wants to defend and prevent Alex getting damage onto his tower. Now, we'll see how quickly Millennium can get that bottom tower and rotate around. There's no dragon available, but that's what we talked about. Millennium have the tools at their disposal. With a teleport trundle and with very good barrels coming out of Kurt, it is setting them up to grab some kills and... and not necessarily out of this game just yet. One minute and 40 seconds until the next dragon comes up, and there is the cutlass for Genja, so I'll I'll stand corrected on that one. Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, the standard is Infinity Edge into Blade of the Rune King. Maybe if he has a lot of kills back-to-back, -back, it does uh, allow him to grab a Stinger or an Instant Zephyr. You can argue till the end of time the uh, decision-making and whether or not it works, but right now Gambit are in control. They've got themselves that just shy of 3k gold lead. You see that Darian is counter jungling the race. You can see Diamond is moving with him. They've set themselves up. They want to go in behind Kevin. I think Kevin will make it to the lane in time. Already inside of that lane, there's the ultimate prop out of Diamond though. And they're gonna go in towards Kevin. Stun comes down, Pillar is in position, but Kevin is going very, very low. This will be a finisher. Darian picks that one up, while well, the rest of the Millennium are coming towards that top lane. Alexic did start moving up as well, but they're trying to escape. Meanwhile, Gam Gamut did take down the outer turret on the bottom lane. And look at this, Diamond did start to move back, but Darian kind of oh, stuck kick. in place, gets kicked back here underneath the turret, flashes away, Solar Flare will lock him up. There's the finishing damage, Kerb gets the kill. That was a very good kick from Aranea. The problem is, the only kill that Millennium were able to secure in that top lane meant that they've lost two towers. The bottom outer turret and the middle outer turret is not going to go down. Good defense, good play from Edward. Brilliant play. Edward being on point with those plays so far as the Q from RNA did land, but I think was a little scared of going too close towards Alex Itch, who's really starting to build up now. So I want to just go back to that top lane fight. I actually think Kevin may have killed himself. He put the pillar down right in front of himself, and he had to walk around it while Darian and Diamond were sitting right on top of him. I feel that pillar maybe could have been used a little bit more optimally to buy some time to run away. Nevertheless, Kevin was taken out. He's still farming okay in a matchup where he's been dealing with Darian. Now, Dragon has respawned. Both teams are grouping, and the action's going to carry on. Now, Edward's in trouble. And himself stunned, but will they follow in? Actually, a lot of damage just sidesteps the True Shot Barrage from Creatin. I think if that had landed, RNA may well have just followed up with his Q. As happens, it didn't, and Millennium have started to back away. But that's allowed the rest of Gambit to actually get in position. Darian has come down from this top lane. They're going to start Dragon. Yeah, Gambit aren't even afraid of Millennium this time around. The previous Dragon, there was some respect to the tight quarters in the AOE. Right now, Aranea, he's jumping in. He's been hooked! Oh, he's been hooked and you don't escape those easily and will be finished off here. It's Darian that gets the kill in the end. And that turret didn't quite go down before. It's it will now. Down. Kevin might get one in return, though. So the, the dragon secured by Gambit. They're going to siege up this uh, middle outer turret. That's the last turret on the outer line of defense for Millennium down. Kevin at least gets something back. But the problem is it's, it's too little. The gold lead is now up to 5,000. Creatins were jumped on by Diamond. Yeah. <laughs> Kazix. He's going to single him out completely from this one. We can see that Creatin using the barrier, which I'm not sure really why you would use your barrier and your flash in that scenario. but. Diamond was always going to kill him in my eyes. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think Diamond had a better positioning on him, had so much damage. Now, it's not stopping. Darian's been jumped on by Jerry. Darian's been jumped on. We've seen how slippery he's been in the past. He can get away from this one, though. He's doing a decent <laughs> amount of damage, the two of them. Got his ultimate running here. Of course, he does have a Sunfire cape. Again. Look at this. Gragas is coming around. Here is Lee Sin as well. The Q is going to land. Can Darian survive this one? He's going to oh jump over the wall. Can God. you believe it? The Swaglord again walks away. Three men chasing him. Not even close. I cannot believe that Darian has got away again. You can make a highlight reel of the number of times he's escaped in this game alone. Three members of the team were on him. He even stood in the damage from Leona and Kevin's uh, trundle. For the entirety of 15, 20 seconds, manages to get out alive. Unfortunately, 
Aronia didn't have the damage to execute him, wasn't able to follow up. So Gambit maintain their gold lead, they maintain control of the map, and it seems that every time somebody goes for Darien, an objective is secured by Gambit. And he died six times yesterday against Alliance. To be honest, he probably should have died five times, I think, already in this game, compared to the two that he actually has after getting away so nicely so many times. And if those kills would have come in, this could actually be a really different game from Millennium's yeah, side. Definitely. And when you've got uh, you know champions like Trundle and Gragas, who, if they get gold and they get items, can do so much with it, it could have been a different landscape. Interestingly now, as we're hitting a 20-minute mark and we see Gambit in a, a pretty commanding lead right now, when Gambit beats Millennium, as they are 3-0 up in the head-to-head, -head, they beat them faster than any other team that they beat in the LCS. So we'll see if Gambit can close this game out quickly. Traditionally, it's what they've been able to do. Only 20 minutes in, 8-6 in kills, but that gold lead starting to become quite monstrous here from Gambit. And there's Darian doing what he does best, which is just running around the top side of the enemy jungle. Genja now has his Infinity Edge complete, by <laughs> so, the way. So, Infinity Edge plus Bilgewater Cutlass, I believe we're going to be seeing a Blade of the Rune King as his next big item. Gambit have started off Baron. They have got so much damage on this Baron. Millennium, they don't have vision in the pit. They have no idea this is going on. They haven't made a single move. Finally, Aranea is making his way towards the pit, but I think he's going to be there too late. We'll have to see how he plays this out. They've got to look for a steal. And he looks that way. Oh, he's been hooked. They jump over the top. Aranea goes down. Baron not finished off. There goes the barrel in. They hook Kerp as well. Kerp's going to become the next victim to this one. Gambit got the Baron as well. What a play from them. Baron, two kills as well. They can really push here. If they siege up on inhibitor turret, they, I think they've got enough time to get a turret down. The question is, what sort of defense can Millennium put together? Their wave clear is gone. They do not have Gragas available. I'm getting a bit excited ahead of myself as it's only the inner turret that is they're setting their eyes on. Gambit are just not stopping. They're going in again. Another hook. It connects. Wow! I didn't even think that was going to be possible. Jay Reed came in to protect Kevin. He finds his life. He's gone from him. And Gambit are going through. They've chased all the way through behind the inhibitor. They're going for Aranea. He gets played and finished off by Genja. He'd only just respawned. Now he's dead again. And Gambit are going back for the inner turret, by the way, which they didn't take down. Edward is playing out of his skin. This is the Edward that we were used to seeing last split. He has not missed a single important hook. He continues to catch opponents until this very second. Damn you, Edward, make me eat my words. But look at this gold lead, 10,000. Darian, <laughs> there is no more swag than dancing in the face of your opponent, Israel. They are just in a brilliant position and playing this game fantastically. And looking confident and having fun, and that seems to be the winning solution from Gambit when they're <laughs> feeling confident. All right, then he's gonna he's gonna have another go at this one. Where's he going this time? He's got five men from Millennium trying to chase him down. Well, here comes Diamond from the side. Darian has hardly lost any help from that one. They're gonna do some good damage onto Kevin. Kirk's gonna roll the barrels in, but I feel that Kevin is gonna die. It's Edward that picks up that one. Jerry's the next target, and Diamond helps along with Edward to finish off that one. And that's two kills after Mr. Swaglord himself, by the way, didn't die at all. Hashtag worth on the side of Darian. He played perfect baits, holding Millennium in place in the jungle. Gambit just collapsed on the members of Millennium, grabbed themselves two kills. There was no minions to work with underneath that inhibitor turret, so they didn't stick around on the map. Instead, they backed away. And if you actually look at how many minions are in the top and the bottom lane, Gambit, not the most ideal of sieging and pushing positions. So they have backed off. Gonna get themselves some items, get themselves some CS, and we'll see how they push forward. We do want to note, though, Gen just picked up a zeal, so there is a slight difference in his item pathing. So we'll continue to keep track of that as the game progresses. Now, we'll see what he ends up going for with that one. As he clearly just comes out here from Genja trying to stop Millennium from taking what would be the third turret. They will take that one as well. So they do finish off the outer ring of turrets, but they've only got two inner turrets left in the bottom and the top lane. Middle lane is right down to that Nexus, uh, no, not Nexus, sorry, Inhibitor turret at this point. Yeah, you and I both getting a bit ahead of ourselves as far yeah. as the turrets are concerned. I think I want to touch on the item build here from Diamond Proc just a tiny bit more. Forget Diamond, just talk about <laughs> Darien. He's got Morellonomicon now. <laughs> Morellonomicon on Renekton. Now, he does have some AP scaling on that Dominus. Uh, there is some AP Renekton builds out there, but hey, cooldown reduction reduces healing from Trundle, who has built-in healing. I'm trying to theorycraft this. There, it's it's Darian and it's Gambit. I mean, there's, there's nothing more you can say. Yeah. He's having fun. 
The wizard <laughs> of the top lane, and they jump in. Yeah, Jay we actually going to throw down the solar flare. Alex is going to get caught up from this one. He almost took Creatine with him on the way, but the rest of the tanky beasts are right in the middle. And look at Darian. He's absolutely jumping on everyone. Double kill for him. Finally does start to go low. Kevin's going to be able to force him out of this one. Creatine's at half HP at the back. Darian dives in again. Does come out, but here comes Kazix. Creatin gonna get slowed. Ultimate use, rendering Zoman. Creatin, you're a dead man. And Kevin might not escape this one either. Diamond forcing him right onto the fountain. He does get away though. So the inhibitor turret falls. The rest of Gambit are now on the inhibitor. That was a very good barrel from Kerp that allowed them to pick up the kill on Alex Sitch. But the problem is they're so far behind, it does not matter. There's a 14,000 gold. The Gambit have got minions on the, uh, in the base. They're now gonna siege up this Nexus turret. They don't give a monkey. They don't give a monkey. They're gonna fight this one, but the rest of Millennium actually spawning in, so Gambit have to be a little bit careful about this. And by a little bit, just back away. That's the wise thing to do at this stage. Darian, we all know that he doesn't like backing away at any point, even if he's got five guys chasing him through the enemy's jungle. He still somehow manages to get away from those scenarios. Gambit going to clean up a few buffs and what have you here. The blue buff going to go over towards Diamond. Gendry is doing the red buff on the top side of Millennium. They've been jungle. collapsed on, though. They could be in trouble. Barrel even's going to help him. Oh, Kerb going a little bit too far out from this one. Another hook lands for Eddie, but Does not sure not. they really want this fight. The rest of the team starting oh. to chase around. Diamond trying to escape off to the backside. When's he going to have that jump up? Edward, I don't think we'll get away. Solar wow. Flare missed. The pillar didn't slow him, but surely Edward can't get away. Yeah, Plays Gambit. down. There is the kill. Kevin gets that one, but Alex is coming in from the backside. He's going to go straight towards Kerb. Here comes the burst. They turn around, try and get Alex down. There's a lot of damage back on towards Alex, and he will now have to turn around and back off. I'd like to point out that that was Gambit engaging or re-engaging a 2v4 and Millennium not being able to actually keep them in place or have enough damage to get through Alex Hitch's rise. That is a super tanky rise. His Seraph's Embrace is completed. He's had his Rod of Ages for an, an age. Negatron Cloak and Chain Vest. Right now, <laughs> Gambit is just such a good position. Is that an Ohm Wrecker? It is an Ohm Wrecker for Darian. So, you know what? Gambit have tower dove so many times, and they've been in the face of Millennium so many times. They've picked up an Ohm Wrecker. This is Darian. This is Darian. I mean, there's nothing more you can say. You can't theory craft that. That is just him saying, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you're doing. I'm going to win anyway. Well going to kill Jay Ree here, or is he? Jay Ree flashes off to the side. Darian says, nope, I'm going to keep going on this one. It is actually Alex that picks up that kill. Well, that's going to leave them 5v4 as Gambit close in onto that inner turret in the top lane. i tell you what, Darian might just step forward and think about having a fight from this one. He does. Just slicing and dicing in and out of the fight. That's turret number six here for Gambit. Their gold lead is astronomical at this point. So just, you know, for, for curiosity's sake, with 125 ability power, he gains an additional 13 damage per second on Dominus. I definitely think that's hashtag worth in your itemization. Right now, Gambit, let's go. Ohm Wrecker active and tower dive. Don't even need the active, because you're Gambit. Oh, good knockback though there by Kirk. Gets a couple of them low. Where are they going to focus on? They were actually focusing Kevin, which is not the target. Solar Flare was a sun away from where they really needed it. And Jerry now the focus from that one. Genjo is going to take down Aranea on Lee Sin Ooh. as he picks up the double kill. And Gambit are just swarming in around. There's a flash in from Alexic. One more will do it. He does get that one, but Kevin Trying to finish up the rest. No, Alex secures the double. Only Kerp alive. Gragas, what are you going to do? The turret, he they can't it. stop beyond right now. They did manage to get that. He's down. Ace for Gambit here. This is surely the game. This is definitely game. There's so much damage on the side of Gambit. They're going to be able to just push in with the super minions in that mid lane, get onto the Nexus turret. Gambit have put on one hell of a show. They beat Millennium faster than they beat any other team in the LCS. This is 4 0 to Gambit. 4 0. Not dropping a single game over the course of the split. They're not done just yet, though. Millennium trying for a few more. All they're doing is giving Alex Hitch more kills to boost his KDA at this stage. 9 3 8 on Alex Hitch at this stage of the game. And there is Aaron Ayer, who not doing much for his KDA this game, that's for sure. 1 8 5 for him. Nexus going to be focused somewhat here, but Gambit are kind of low, scared of losing out on a few deaths. Yeah, at this point in time, I think Gambit are definitely having some more fun with this one. Yeah, but it's down in the mid in the top lane. Edward even gets Darien out safely. I think we have some very serious questions to ask at Gambit's theory crafters and Gambit's analysts because they don't subscribe to the same item crafting theory that the rest of the world does. And I think they'll give you some uh, humorous replies if you talk to them. Let's have a look what comes out, because everyone's got quite a lot of gold here. Genja himself, I think, was sat on over 4,000 gold to go back with. 
2,300 for Darian as well. So he can add something strange and beautiful into his build. Put things into perspective. With Genji sitting at over 4,000 <laughs> gold right now. Yeah, Hourglass, why not? When you've got over 4,000 gold on Genja, his team is 20,000 gold ahead of Millennium. So Genja has not spent half of the total gold that Creatins earned this entire game. I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing you can do against that item deficit. Even with an Hourglass, Morellonomicon, Omreka, Renekton. He just finished off Blade of the Ruin King. He's actually waiting in base now. There's a static shift and a stinger. Yes. Going the same way as we've seen him. Zephyr is you know item what? number four. At this point, it doesn't particularly matter, I feel, though. Yeah, I think I think there's bigger things to talk about. Alex is going to get caught out. <laughs> Not even. Millennium are too scared to go three on one against Alex's right because they have no idea where the rest of Gambit are. Right now, it is just a matter of formality. Gambit going to siege down this mid turret. There's only three of them. They are that strong. They're going to go on to the inhibitor with just three members. Well, Darian does have the extra armor from that Sonya's Hourglass, which is definitely what he wanted with that item. Alex, he's going to get closed down. Does have himself a Guardian Angel, though. Will he be able to escape afterwards? Here comes the damage back onto Diamond joining in. Alex only just going down from that one. Jerry going to be isolated. There was the shutdown on towards Alex. It came in from Aranea. Jerry will fall in the end, though. And this is just a simple push in to finish off the Nexus. They may end up diving into the fountain at this rate. I'm sure Darian is kind of fancy in that one. But the Nexus is going to start taking damage from those super minions. There's a ward in there. Is Darian going to dive in? The rest of the team catch out. Kurt is low, but he's going to go yes! in there. Darian loses on you at the end. And Gambit takes down Millennium, having a bit of fun there at the end, but a dominating performance from the Russians.